Hey there everyone, Hitesh here and welcome to the series of Golang again. In this video, we are going to explore slices and slices are much more powerful and mostly used uh, data type in the entire Golang and you're gonna use this a lot. In fact, majority of the time you'll be using this one. Now slices are actually under the hood arrays and these arrays, once they get an abstraction layer and some more features, they're called as slices. And in the Golang, we have a habit of using slices more because they are more powerful. Again, one more thing, if you understand slices more, or in fact you get comfortable more with that, you will be able to understand and be able to kind of play with the databases more easily. Uh, that's what we do majorly in the slices. So nothing to be worried. It is super si simple, super easy to understand. Let's go ahead and work on with that. So let's create a new folder, and this one is 09. I'm gonna call this one as my slices. And of course, just like always, we are going to create a new file into it. We'll call this one as main.go. And let's open that up into the integrator terminal. You get the idea, always go mod in it, if I can write that in it. And let's call this one as simply slices. Feel free to call it anything, doesn't really matter that much. And here we get the package and we simply go ahead and define a function, let's call it as main. And use the fumped package and we're gonna call this one as uh, simply welcome to video on slices so that's what we got and nice and easy now the syntax of the slices is going to sound absolutely familiar to you just like what we have studied in case you missed that video or you are you have been it's been while that you have watched that remember how we declare these arrays and especially the syntax at line 17 we create a variable we give it a name and then we use the curly braces put a number inside it and then string and then the curly brace syntax this was the syntax of an array. Now let's see how the syntax of slice actually looks like. So we're gonna create again our fruit list. So we're gonna simply say this is my fruit list. And when we create a slice, we don't actually mention that how many values are gonna come in. When you define those values, that means you are creating a simple array. When you don't define it, you can just go ahead and say, hey, this is a string, and that's pretty much it, that's you get it. But in the case of slices, if you are using this syntax, don't you worry, I'll tell you another syntax as well. But if you use this syntax, then you need to initialize it as well. And this is the basics of it. Now let's go ahead and try to actually uh, print out some other stuff. And this time I'm not interested in printing the fruit list. Actually, I'm more interested in knowing what type of the data this is. So I'm gonna simply say, let's use the strings, type of fruit list is, and then we're gonna use a verb. So percent t for that let's have a slash n also and let's go ahead and fill this verb so this time i'm going to go ahead and say give me the fruit list i'm interested in knowing what type of data structure this is or the data type in case you want to go for that so let's say that go run and we want to run the main.go and notice here it says type of fruit list is this guy so this is actually slices okay so this is what we got, and of course, we can go ahead and fill the values with that. So let's go ahead and fill this with apple, and we are gonna get tomato, and what else, peach? Yeah, how about that? Okay, so there we go, we got this one up here. So nice and easy, no problem in that one. Now, the, the main important question is, since the array was very precisely defined, only three values or four values can come in, we cannot just, just go ahead and add as many values as we like, but here we can do this. We can just go ahead and add as many values as we like, and it automatically expands the memory for us. So that is the great thing. But how do we add the values? In the case of array, we saw that we can go ahead and put the mark up here, like at zero position or any other position, you go ahead and put that one here. This is not how we work with the slices. In the case of slices, we go ahead and use a method which is append. Now in this append method, first you need to provide in what slice I want to add some data. So in my case, I'm gonna go ahead and say that please add the data into fruit list. So that is now defined. Now what the data that you want to add in that. So after that, you go ahead and add that. So let's go ahead and add mango, everybody's favorite. And for some people's favorite, let's go ahead and add banana as well. Now what's happening here, the append method actually takes this list and add these two values into it. And final product will be again moved into this fruit list. So that's what it is happening up here. Nice and easy. Let's go ahead and obviously we are going to go ahead and print this fruit list now. Let's go ahead and save this. Come back up here and try to run this. And there we go. We got uh, apple, tomato, peach, mango, banana. Everything is all up here. 
Now comes up the most interesting part, which you'll be using a lot. Okay, so let's go ahead and say, this is my fruit list. I want to add all of the result into it. Now this time, I'm gonna use the same method append. Of course, I want to use the same fruit list, but this time, I'm gonna go a little bit different. Instead of using any comma syntax, I'm gonna use this, uh, the square syntax up here. Now let's see what happens if I go ahead and say, uh, I want to have the value up here, but instead of just saying one, I'm gonna use a colon syntax. Now this colon syntax is actually used to slice up your slice. And that means if you want to make a separate parts of your slice, that's when you use it. Let's see what happens when I say one and a colon. This is very important and pay attention here. And obviously we are going to print this up. So let's go ahead and say fruit list, not fruit list, we need pumped here and let's go ahead and say this is a fruit list there we go save this one and let's go ahead why are you complaining it says is equivalent to yeah we are, we are fine with that let's go ahead and run this one here now notice here very carefully what is our list which is mentioned up here at the top so we have apple tomato peach mango and banana but when I say one and colon that means tomato peach mango and banana so the first element is no longer available. Remember all these uh, list or any numbers that anything that you get, uh, they are range the number exclusive. So number itself doesn't count in majority of the language. So we here see that the apple is no longer available. So it starts from zero. So what's basically this means that I will start from zero and then I'll miss that zero and then I'll start with one and the ending limit is all. For example, let me give you one more, which will make much more sense. If I go ahead and say three here, now notice what's going to happen. It says start from position one. Remember, starts from zero. So apple will not be counted. So start from position one. So I started from tomato and I said stop at position three. So this is zero, this is one, this is two, and this is three. So what will happen? Can you guess what is the actual list that's going to come in? It will start from tomato, so that is one, that is two, that is three. But since I told you range are always non-inclusive, so the mango will not be counted. So the final result will be tomato and peach. Okay, let's go ahead and run this one because that will obviously confirm our theory. Let's go ahead and clean this up, run that again. And there we go. Now we see tomato and peach. Just to reiterate, start from position one. So apple, nope, that's zero. Start from tomato, okay. And we go one then two, then three. I told you the last range is always non-inclusive. So come back one and tomato and peach. Now why I'm paying this much of attention on this thing? Because this is gonna be utilized a lot, especially when you're making the to-do apps or anything related to database. You will need this solution a lot of times. Sometimes there is a long slice of values and you might need to delete just one value from it. And this is super important for that. The video is gonna be a little bit longer, but I want to just explain this concept just right here. So bear with me on this one. Okay, I'll come back onto this one, but now you get the idea. And by the way, in case you want to see that, yep, this is also possible. And in case you can guess what could be the result of this one, here we go, no big surprises. Uh, we simply say, hey, uh, I don't have a start value, so start from default, which is zero. So it started from the default, which is Apple. And then we say till three. So we said, okay, zero, one, two, and three, so three, non-inclusive, so we come back again, peach, and that's what we get the result. Now using these combination of putting these columns or the number before the column or after the column, we will get the syntax of how we can delete some values, okay? This is it, this is it as of now. Let's go ahead and do something a little bit less complicated, okay? If you remember, in the case of memory management, I told you there are two ways to allocate the memory in case you want to do that. There is a new keyword and there is a make keyword. Let's utilize the make keyword to define a slice up for, for us. Okay, so now this is all done and we're going to talk a little bit more onto this. Let's do a little bit something light and try to explain you a little bit more on the slices and something really interesting that can be a little bit quirky on the Golang. Let's go ahead and try to create a value of high score. So these are high scores that I'm using, but this time I'm not gonna be using the syntax that we have been using so far. I'll go and use the syntax, which is a little bit different. So let's go ahead and use the make and what and how we use that. We first define what type of data you want to have and then we define what size you're gonna have. And this actually is uh, something where you keep an eye on. So I want a slice which is going to hold integers this time and I want the value to be uh, four. Okay, very, very interesting, the high score, or I should actually keep it as high scores because it's array, not array, slices. 
By default, this is an array getting a, a layer of abstraction, and thus we call them slices. So technically, they are slices. <laughs> okay. So let's go ahead and have the high scores, and we'll have at zeroth position. We're going to go ahead and add uh, 234 maybe. So this is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So we get all the values being filled up. Basically, we actually got one more. This is this shouldn't be like that. OK, let's go ahead and fill the values. So we're going to say this is 345. This will be at position 1, position 2, position 3. OK, nice and easy. And let's change the values. So this one will be 465. This one will be something bigger, 867. Yeah, maybe. OK, and uh, I would like to change a little bit things up here. Uh, let's go for 945 because I have something in mind which I'll show you in a minute. So let's go for that. OK, I would like to save this one. And obviously, without a doubt, you know that what will happen if I go ahead and try to print high scores. No big deal. No surprises there at all. We get all the values being printed up. So we got 0, 1, 2, and 3. So all, all uh, four values are being printed up. Now, coming up to nothing surprises, uh, let's go ahead and try to add one more value. You obviously know what's going to happen. If I go ahead and say fourth value, and that is having, let's just say, 777, any value could be there. Now, if I go ahead and try to run this, you obviously know what's going to happen. It's going to crash because we said we want just the four values here, and we try to just have a value which is out of the bound and thus we get the same uh, error up here which is hey uh, I don't know what you're doing with the range index out of bound range of 4 with the length 4 but something interesting that might catch your attention that let's comment this down there we go this is all happy we know about it okay this is all happy but interestingly you can actually come here and say that hey high scores I want to go ahead and use the append method in the high scores, and I want to add a value of 555, and probably one more, 666, and probably one more, uh, 3, 2, 1. Yeah, that's fine. Now, can you guess what's going to happen in this case? Obviously, some of you will say, hey, we are going to get an error. But no, my friend, this is where Go behaves a little bit different. The way how it works, that may is definitely going to give you a slice of integer, and you can store four values, but this is the default allocation of the memory. As soon as you use the method append, it is going to reallocate the memory, and will all of the values will be accommodated. And that is a little bit surprising. If I run this, now you can see that the all values are accommodated. Yes, initially, you have actually gone absolutely great with the memory. You got only four memories to be allocated to you. As soon as the new value comes in, then the uh, entire memory allocation happens again. And this saves a lot of memory, a lot of time, and a lot of uh, performance optimization comes in uh, right from this one. OK, this is all good. Uh, let me show you a couple of more interesting stuff, which is not available in the array, but they are available in the slices. So there is a package known as sort, and it can help you to sort a whole lot of things from a string to integers to float. And in fact, it can give you some of the true and false Boolean answers, something like, is it sorted or not? Uh, and slice is sorted, slice stable, and a whole bunch of other things. What we're going to use in this case is I want to just use these ints, uh, which actually ints sorted a, sorts a slice of integer in increasing order. So that's what it does. So let's go ahead and say that I want to pass on high scores. And once this is all sorted, it should provide me a result with all the sorted values. So pumped print, there we go. And let's go ahead and say, let's print high scores. And hopefully, in theory, I'll get a result which is sorted. And yes, I get that. So 2, 3, 4, 3, 2, 1, and all of that. So these all methods are available to you in the slices, not in the array. Okay. So uh, these are all good. Uh, just one more thing I want to show you, that there are some Boolean values, just as I showed you. So font, and I can ask a question like sort dot ints, come on, ints are sorted, which gives me a true and false values, false values. So if the integers are sorted, it will give me a true, otherwise, obviously, a false. In my case, this is true because all the values are being sorted already. But if I move this code a bit above at line 32, and I try to run this again, it obviously will give me a false value up here. So there we go. OK, this is part one. I thought to complete this one in part one only, but uh, there is a little bit more I want to discuss about slices, especially how you actually delete some value from the databases and this kind of a simulation that I want to go through. So I'll catch you up in the next video, and we'll discuss a tiny bit more about the slices. Let's catch up in the next video.